A, a very important point, actually. Uh, all of you who are interested in working as a team to fight this monstrosity, please do not leave today before you leave your contact information. If you would like to work with us, we do need any help we can get. Yeah. This is not an easy fight. It never has been. But in, all the, all, in, the, in the beginning, there might be these first small steps, which are always the hardest to take, but once you take on a certain momentum as a community, you cannot be stopped. You should never ever underestimate the power of a community in action. You can give me just one uh, little example here. Um, Wygros Actors for Clean Energy is quite a few of the original members in the room. When we started our fight against the proposed biomass plant, which is also one of these outdated uh, en energy ideas, when we started this fight about three and a half years ago, or so we were told this is a done deal because we came in very late. This was only one hundred ten million dollar project. We are now very early. This is a three billion dollar project, though. But we are very early in the process. We can get this thing stopped. I do never ever quit. The Dalai Lama once said, if you think you're too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. <laughs> the littlest, tiniest insect can have a huge impact. A community that gets organized can have a huge impact, but we need every single soul to help us. If you cannot help us uh, directly in terms of action or in, in terms of writing of letters or contacting your elected representatives, you might also just consider giving us a little bit of money. Simply said. Five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars. There are printing costs, there are billboards, there are yard signs. It is a whole com organizational process, really. Whatever you can do, we will gladly accept. Leave us your phone number, your contact information. If you feel comfortable enough to do that, we'll get together. We have another meeting in a smaller room, so it's maybe not as depressing when you look from the from the off from the panel down there. In a way, although I love to see all your faces because it means that you care. And stories that I hear from you make me sick in the sense that my heart weeps when I hear that you have to be in a situation that you are like Mr. Rogers living on a piece of land where you think, where you basically are experiencing you being violated as a citizen, as a property owner, and something's being taken away from you, the comfort of having a Mountain Dew, and you shouldn't be smoking, but if you are having a cigarette in the evening or in the morning. Thank you. <laughs> I need to walk over this way. Because I want to show people this. Um, you know, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission does that too, that it's just I'm holding the microphone. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and that's actually relevant. But the first thing I want to say is one county cannot win this fight. That's why it's important to donate. To Spectre Busters, because one thing Spectre Busters is trying to do is to notify all the landowners in every county along the whole pipeline path. Because right now, what we've got is, particularly in Alabama, all they're hearing is what the pipeline company tells them. And that's resulted in when they had the three FERC scoping meetings in Alabama, one of them had zero comments. First time ever. We need to fix that by getting information to them. For example, to answer Carol's question, Mrs. Waller, hello, Mrs. 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 Waller, um, was quoted in the Colquitt Observer as saying the pipeline will not affect land values. Yet, Larry's chuckling here because he knows there's a lot of evidence that it does. That's something we need to get to every landowner along the pipeline. The second thing is, Lowndes County is uniquely important nonetheless, because it is the largest population center on this pipeline path between Lee County in Alabama, where Auburn and Auburn University are, and um, Gainesville, with I believe that's Alachua County, and the University of Florida. And this university, Dallas State University, is also the largest university on the pipeline path between those two points. That's why this panel is being held here. That's why Spectre Busters was formed here. That's why the Lowndes County Commission and the Valdosta City Council actually have more responsibility than even just for their own county or city. And some of the 
you know, one of our local elected officials, Tim Carroll, already took a path to making, exercising some of his responsibility. He wrote a letter to FERC as an e-com, as an e-comment, as an elected city councilor. Other city councilors, the county commission could do that. They could also do something that uh, a different organization, you've seen the basic logo here, up on the uh, screen earlier. This is stick to the ground over there. That's the sticks, which I could use to hit myself in the head with. Walt's Watershed Coalition <coughs> filed as an intervener with FERC. An intervener, that's a special status. That means they have to send you all the documents. They have to listen to what you're, you're telling them, especially when it gets to actually reviewing the case and in case uh, uh, before the commission. Now, I got a call the next working day from John Pecanum of FERC, a name that's familiar to many of the people in this room, saying you can't actually do that formally until they start the formal permit process. But just the filing, even in the preliminary filing, really got their attention. And if you do it in the formal permit process, it will get their attention even more. So that's one thing you can do. Now, what the NRC has to do with this is the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, until last year, had never denied a nuclear reactor permit. And then they did. Calvert Cliffs, Maryland. Because of one tiny little five-person nonprofit organization with no lawyer and basically no money, it can be done. And that's not the only path. FERC is not the only path. You may have heard of the San Onofre nuclear reactor in California, which was down because of some repairs needed, and Southern California Edison was going to bring it back up, and the NRC was going to allow it. But because people complained all the way to Congress, and several Congress people in California started escalating that, some California Edison decided they weren't going to do it. Even just across the state line, well, not, you know, more than just across, but down in, at the Crystal River plant in Florida, that one, that nuclear plant, Crystal River 3 has been down since 2009 because of cracks in the concrete. It's never coming back up. Not because NRC wouldn't give them the permit, because it would be too expensive to fix. And when Duke took over from Progress Energy, they canceled it. It's not just a matter of complaining to FERC. What we need is massive public opposition, and we need our elected officials, local and in Congress, also opposing this thing. That way, this may become too expensive for the pipeline company. They lowballed their bid, according to all the other pipeline companies. It may get to where they cannot afford to put this pipeline in. So, those are some things you can do. And, speaking of walls, this idea actually came from the Georgia Sierra Club, which put out a joint statement of the Florida, Alabama, and Georgia chapters against this pipeline. Georgia Sierra Club is sponsoring a float past the pipeline path, the proposed path on the Withlacoochee River, the border between Brooks and Lowndes, starting at Old Whitman Road, which is just south of US 84, at 7.30 a.m. on the 19th of April, that's a Saturday. And that's a joint uh, outing with walls, with tractor dusters, and with students against violating the environment. So we hope you will all come there, we hope you'll invite all your friends, and more people will be made aware of this thing. Public awareness is just as important as complaining to FERC. We have one last thing, which is the pipeline company has already filed their draft resource report, which according to, they did that back in November. That's not the final one, but it's their draft one, which was pointed at, you know, John Pecanum of FERC pointed me at it. Because it's supposed to justify that the energy is needed by Florida, that there's no better way to get it, and it won't be unduly damaging to the environment. I did not see anything in there that shows that they could not get the same power through solar power, through some of the methods that Dr. Mel just been talking about. And the part about there's no better way to get it is just ludicrous. I cannot imagine any professor at this esteemed university that would not give that part an F 
They claimed it would require more land to produce the same power from solar power than the pipeline. When their own numbers they quoted in Moultrie for how much land the pipeline would take was more than what they said in their own document it would take for solar. And also they pretended solar would require clearing all fresh land when solar mostly goes on the rooftops and on already cleared land. So if FERC just follows its own rules, they should deny this pipeline. They're not going to do that without massive public pressure, including from local elected officials. And while no one county alone can win this, the key county in the center of this pipeline, the most populous county between Auburn and the University of Florida, is Lyles County. Thank you. Um, other people want to make comments? Um, one of the things that 